interesting interview clip here of the people that actually get involved with the DNA studies of King Tut and uh, ancient Egyptians and the genomes that they have. Um, let's listen in. So the descendants of King Tut, 70% of British men, 70% uh, of Spanish men, and 60% of French men all, all belong to this genetic group? Yes, exactly. Yes, they share a common ancestor with these pharaohs. Well, talk about those common ancestors. Uh, where were they from? Who were they exactly? Uh, we think they lived around the Black Sea or maybe in the Caucasus, but we, we don't know exactly where they lived. But um, um, they, this group was founded by one man who lived about 9,500 years ago in this area, around the Black Sea, but we, can, we can't tell exactly at this point of time. Is this surprising? Yes, yes, it is very surprising because uh, we didn't know that um, this uh, lineage of Tutankhamun came from the Black Sea or from Anatolia or the Caucasus because it, it, uh, yeah, well, it didn't come from Egypt. And they, that, this was surprising for us, yes. Is it possible that because the, the group seems to be so large and includes so many, uh, for example, 70% of British men or 70% of Spanish men and 60% of Frenchmen, that kind of thing. Is it possible that there's there are other famous pharaohs or other famous people that are in this group? Uh, yes, yes um, I think so. It's, it's, um, it's possible, uh, of course, yes, as it's, it's very, a very big group, we sure have some, some other royal, um, uh, royal lineages which uh, belong to this, uh, to this Hufflepuff group. Is it possible that it's even outside of uh, the great Egyptian pharaohs and, and maybe other people? Yes, yes. We know, um, we know of the, the last Russian Tsar, Nicholas II. He also belonged to the same Hufflepuff group. He's also uh, one of the famous ones who belongs. So he belongs to the exact same Hufflepuff group. His genetics show to be the same. And there's one weird thing that was about Tsar Nicholas that reminds me of one of my favorite musicians, David Bowie, is that just like Caesar, who is said to have been half divine because he had one blue and one brown eye, so does Tsar Nicholas here have a right side blue eye and a left side brown eye that's showing in this colorized photo. Let's continue. And uh, what else is your research focusing in on now? Where do you take it from here? What happens next? Well, uh, we are. We want to. What we wanted to do with this uh, publication is to start the discussion because I think it's uh, very interesting to find this Hufflepuff group in an uh, ancient pharaoh, and we would like to know how did this lineage come to Egypt? And we, of course, are searching for the living uh, closest relatives uh, to this lineage by comparing the profile. To the test we will do within our project. Well, we didn't mention the United States. I'm curious because a lot of uh, the people in the United States originally they've come from Europe. Mm -hmm. So, have you studied the United States as well? Uh, well, we, we often concentrate on the European countries because our um, the, the customers uh, DNA companies from the United States do also want to know which European country they came from. Most uh, Americans from Europe have um, British or um, yes, uh, British or, uh, for example, German ancestry, so Western European, and I think they, they all, there's also many, uh, many men who live in the United States with this half a group. Well, thank you for chatting with me. Thank you, too. That's Roman Schultz, the managing director of IG, another company studying the DNA of King Tut for the project. Are you a direct descendant of King Tut? You can find out more at our website, worldradio.ch. And you can have your DNA tested and see if you're under the same group. But one thing that will show you that you do fit under the group, actually, is if you have descendants, your mom, your siblings that are around you, grandparents, and so on, because not everybody carries it. Do you have the blue eye gene, and are you of a person that tans? That's pretty much it.
Now, the more we look into it, there are Caucasian mummies all around the world, even in South America and in the Americas. Tall, red-headed Caucasian mummies that aren't American Indians that date before the American Indians. We'll keep studying in this and stay on top of it. They have 42 more mummies now that they have found genomic data out of that they are working through and preliminary things coming from them here which came in the end of September, start of October were that this does even pinpoint more the European DNA and it consolidates and that they had found a few people that were 92% matches with King Tut's DNA even though all of this time from then till now has shown and if he had a family that stayed real tight you couldn't have gotten a better result out of it so it kind of shows lineage and where things happen and whenever the Hyksos left Egypt where they went to like if you like it if you don't I'm sorry Sub me and you get some more information about this. Peace.